Hello everybody. Um, it's so anticlimactic, like following Richard's talk. I'm, I can't match that. Like that was definitely your money's worth, right? I was really, really impressed with that. So I don't have any slides. I'm sorry. Um, hopefully I'll make up with it with either jokes, which I haven't prepared, so probably not, or some code. I'm going to show you a whole bunch of code. So I'm Pierre. Um, who am I? Uh, I see a lot of faces I don't recognize. I'm Mike. I think we can all agree that's a reasonable likeness of me. Um, I am a Google developer expert in web technologies. I work in the research and development team of a company called BBD, where we do stuff. Um, but my, stuff. But my role primarily is um, working with web technologies and advising people on the web as a platform. And this talk is has toned down a little bit from my initial, like what I wanted to talk about. Um, Jerry told me that maybe I shouldn't be so angry. Um, but basically, like when we talk about the web as a platform and how to build stuff on web, like you need to know a lot of things, right? And it's very difficult with the experience that I've got trying to explain to somebody that's either been off of the web and come back to it after like five or six years, or is starting from ground level, like how this stuff, stuff works and what's common between the two and like, the thing, I mean, if you think about it, the stuff you need to know, you need to know um, complicated build tooling. You need to understand transpilation and why you need transpilation, multiple different versions of the language. You need to understand like the DNA differences between multiple different frameworks. On top of that, you need to understand JavaScript, HTML, CSS, HTTP, security, right? All of these bits and pieces. And it feels like, it feels like it's really, really intimidating. I don't know. It's, does anybody have that shared experience? Like, I, I don't know, it, it's hard. And like, when you talk about the learning curve for a framework or a library or building something, then I think you're, you're on the wrong path when we're talking about, yeah, this is a steep learning curve, but it's worth it. Um, I think that like, often when we talk about, about frameworks, we'll show you the cool one second, this is how we, we, we've scaffolded up all of this black magic and it's amazing and like, you've drawn a couple circles and then you know what, you can just, you can just fill in the details and build yourself a horse. Um, and I think that that's, that's a pitfall that we often fall into with this complicated tooling where we try and hide the complexity by, um, by uh, having the tooling take care of it. So this talk is basically going to be an almost zero tooling talk. Now that's not technically possible in the web as it stands at the moment. It used to be possible um, and there's varying reasons why we need it. Um, like we need some basic pr principles. We need a web server. We can't get away without a, without a web server. We can't just open up an index.html file. Um, and we need to get our packages from somewhere for dependencies and things that we're going to use. Um, and it's good that we need tooling for those things. But that's basically the extent of it. So I'm going to show you a, a library that, and it's, this is not going to um, like demonize any other framework that you might use or enjoy. Those are all great and I encourage you to look at reductionist minimalistic solutions that make it seem easy and feel easy. Um, but this is going to show you something that I think is really, really easy. Um, and we're going to look at it from ground principles. And the thing that we're going to take a look at is a little, little library called lit.html. Now lit.html um, is essentially a rendering library that's based off of JavaScript text tagged template literals. And don't worry about that. We're going to take a look at what it means in a second from first principles. Um, but the thing that I really dig about it is that if you want to extend this thing, it's just JavaScript. Um, it renders just HTML. It doesn't do anything really magical, um, barring just one tiny, tiny, tiny thing. Uh, and it fits into a whole variety of use cases. There's a bunch of stuff that you can do with it. Um, I don't think you have to use it, but I think it's quite fun and it's quite easy to make the web like, expressive and easy again. So, like I said, I don't have any code. Oh, I mean, any, any code. Oh, hopefully I have code. Whew. Uh, I don't have any slides. So the rest of this is basically just code. I'm going to live code a lot. And as we said, or as we always say, live coding is inherently a collaborative exercise. You're all in this with me for the next 45 minutes. I'm really, really sorry. Um, so help me when I make a mistake. So to start off with, I'm going to start off literally with an empty folder. That's my empty folder, and here it is on the terminal. Okay, we're going to start from scratch. 
So the first thing that we'll need to do is we'll need to um, initialize our package manager, which we're going to use npm from node. And I'm just going to YOLO enter through everything. Because I'm sure that's fine. I can do with the default license. Um, then I need to install some dependencies. And there's only one real toolchain dependency that I need. And I'm going to install, as a dev dependency, a simple HTTP server, which is literally just going to serve our static files. It does nothing fancy. Um, luckily, the Wi-Fi is fast. Then we're going to install lit HTML itself as a dependency, because I'm going to need it a little bit later. Um, and then I'm going to install a whole bunch of CSS from the to-do MVC packages. Now, yes, I know I'm going to build a little to-do app, but I was raised on building to-do apps as Carters, and I use it as like a gauge for how complex a framework is. Like if it's complicated to get a simple to-do app up and running, then maybe it's going to be complicated when you build your big application. Make sense? Um, so it's just the yardstick that I use. It's not perfect, but hey, it's something. Um, and then after that, we've got the simple package.json, uh, which has our dependencies in it, exactly as we expect. And all we're going to do is we're going to create, not SATA, start method. And the start method is literally just going to run HTTP server. Um, and that's it, right? And that's just going to start up our server for us. Now, any good website is basically just an index.html page with some stuff. So we're going to create ourselves an index.html page. And then inside here, we're just going to scaffold out a uh, basic index.html page, call it demo. Okay. Um, and then we're going to include our styling. So we're going to go link. And we're going to ref reference our styling directly. Now it sits inside the node modules because it was a package that we installed as an external style sheet. Uh, it's the app CSS, it's the index CSS, and that's great. And then all we need to do is we need to add an h1 here, and it's going to say hello, GDG. Yes. Uh, just two exclamation marks. No, one exclamation mark. One exclamation mark is fine. Three. Three. Yeah. I am what my audience demands. Oh, three. Three exactly. No more, no less. No. Okay, and then we're going to npm start. Uh, it's going to start the server, which is cool. And then inside here, we're going to leave those memes running so that they eat up all of my RAMs. And then, hey, awesome. We've got a simple index.html page. There's nothing intimidating about this, right? It's really easy. It's taken us 15 minutes. It's easy to get into. The only little bit of complexity is the idea that we have to serve this stuff from somewhere. Okay. Um, now let's talk about strings. Strings are amazing. Now, other programming languages demonize strings. But in, in JavaScript, strings are great. It's fast, it's easy to use, um, and the browser really, really likes them. It's good at it for whatever reason. So we're going to write ourselves a whole bunch of strings. And we're going to start off by linking to a module. So we're going to have a script tag, and that tag is going to be of type module. And this is because we want to link to ES 2015 standard imports, exports, that kind of thing. Because it's 2019, damn it. We can use this stuff. Every browser that we need to support or that we should be supporting supports this. So we can just get started writing cool code. So inside our source, we're just going to say, well, this is all going to sit inside our app.js. Asp, asp, asps, very dangerous. You go first. OK, inside our app.js. I suppose I don't need the dots forward slash. OK, just like that. Uh, I think that's all we need to do here. And then we're going to go inside this app.js, and we're going to create a new file. The one thing you can never practice is like the angle that you're going to be typing at. Now, when we talk about template literals, right, we're going to be talking about those backticks, OK? So like something where we can use it as a basic string. Hello, GDG. Only one exclamation mark this time. You've had your say. Um, <laughs> or importantly, we can say, cool, well, we want to interpolate into this string, and we're going to create a variable called GDG. We're going to declare GDG. We're going to say that's going to be Google Devel Developer Group. And then that'll be interpolated into that. Um, and then we can do cool stuff. Like, that's not the limit of it. We can also then, st we can compute in there. So we can say, the time is now. And we're going to give it a new date. 
new, new date, promise I can type. And then dot two times string, that's fine. And then what we need to do is we need to show this on the page. And all we're going to say is, well, cool, we know we've got a, a document, that's our index.html that we've loaded in. We know we've got a body in that document, and we're literally just going to append the string onto the body. Cool, there we go, there's app. And that works pretty well. So you can see there, like every single time we refresh, provided I wait a second, the time changes, it's, it's got all the bits and pieces that we want. So there we go, we've now got template rendering, right? Dynamically changing content on the page, which is pretty cool. The problem with that is as soon as I want to then put markup on the page, and this is basically the problem that every framework solves in various ways. React, Angular, Vue, Lit HTML, this is the fundamental premise of it, is how do I put markup on the page that I dynamically generated? Because the challenge is if I wanted to bold that by putting it in bold tags, and then I refresh, the page is like, no dude, you gave me a string. Which is fine, we can get around this, right? And to get around this, we're going to lean on something um, called the tag for tag template literals. And it's something that's been around since this came out, but people don't use very often. And it was designed to use for like domain specific languages and that kind of thing. And it just never, it's a little bit clunky for that use case, so it never picked up. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a what tag, okay? And that's how you would use it. And all that the what tag is essentially is a function, function. JavaScript is all about the functions. So we've got a function that takes in the static parts of a string and a list of array or parameters that's each of the, the dynamic parts that change, which we can just use the spread operator and say, well, give me an array of the dynamic parts of the string. I'll spell that correctly even. Okay. Um, and then we can do cool stuff like returning the static parts. And if we refresh, we'll see that now we just get the string bits and pieces that will never ever change on the page, or we can return the dynamic parts. So from a change detection perspective, we now have an array of the stuff on the page that's changed that we need to re-render, which lets us do really, really high performance things. Um, and importantly, we can simplistically do something like document.create uh, element and we're going to create an h1. And it's going to look like there's nothing on the page, but I promise you when I zoom in here, there is an h1 somewhere. Not in the head, damn it. There. There's an h1. So we've rendered an h1 as a document element to the page. Um, I'm not going to go any further with, further with this contrived example because it's actually quite a bit of code to then get the text in that safely and do it recursively and do all sorts of fancy stuff. Um, but that's, that's what we want. We just want something that's going to turn our string into HTML. And that's what lit HTML literally does. Um, and how we would do that is firstly by getting rid of this useless what function. And we're going to import lit, oh, sorry, uh, HTML and a function called render from our lit HTML file, which we're just going to go and find inside our node modules that we downloaded. Okay, oopsie, lit.js, there it is. And that lets us do this, use this HTML tag that's going to say, cool, there's your string, I'm going to turn this into an HTML element. And I'm going to call the render method, and I'm going to say, cool, I'm going to take app, okay, and then I'm going to render it to document.body. Great. And when we reload now, oopsie, that was not what I meant to do. But it still works, it's all fine. And we'll see that it's going to update, um, but it renders our bolder tag and HTML elements and all those bits and pieces, which is great. Um, but we're now going to build something with it. So if we want to build something with it, we're going to use some stuff to create a simple to-do application rather than just a hello world. Now I'm going to use the height of storage technology, which is an array, and I'm going to store all of my to-dos in an array. And we're going to still create app, but we're going to create app as a generating function, right? So every single time we call it, we get HTML back. 
And we're going to call it there because otherwise things are going to break. And inside this HTML, we're going to have our structure of the application. Um, so in here, I'm not going to type out a whole bunch of HTML, so I'm going to just generate it. But it's basically just a section with a header part and then a main part underneath it. Okay, that's all that it is. Um, and I haven't really done very much work. And I now have, and it's styled because of the, the, the CSS that we've included, but I've got the framework of an application. Uh, inside this, we now need to add stuff, right? So we want to be able to add a new to-do item. So we're going to create a new little render function here. That's going to be our let add to do equals a new item that it, or a new function that's going to return HTML. And that HTML is going to be just a simple input, right? What needs to be done? And it's going to look as follows. Uh, it's not going to render there because I still need to add it in here. Sorry about that. So inside our header section, I need to say, well, I want to now call that render function. And I'm just going to interpolate with JavaScript, just plain old JavaScript, and call my plain old JavaScript function from there. And when I reload, my text box is there. So I've now composed it using multiple different functions. Um, but there is something really, really important that we want to do off of this, is we want to be able to say, well, when you type in the thing and you hit enter, it needs to add the to-do item onto our sophisticated array of to-dos, right? So for that, we need an event. Now that event is going to be key up, and we're going to do some stuff on key up. But we need to give lit HTML some clues that it has other event listener stuff that it needs to do. And this is pretty common amongst all of the, the rendering libraries. They all have their own syntax. For lit HTML, it uses an at for events. So what we can then do is we can say, well, cool, we're just going to pass you a reference to a function, right? Um, and that function is going to be handle handle add to do. Okay? Awesome. So all we're going to do is we're going to create a plain old function here. That's let, uh, I'm actually going to generate it just to save some time in typing. Um, handle add to do, it's going to take the event in. If any key other than enter is pushed, just ignore this, don't go any further. If enter is pushed, then add a new to do item onto the to do array and clear that array and call a function that's going to update the, the page, right? Re-render the page. So we've actually created the contents of this render function. Uh, we just haven't referenced it yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this our update function. And we're going to call it immediately here, and we're going to call it every single time it changes. Uh, now, if I haven't made any mistakes, I can go as, whatever the case may be, and underwhelmingly, it doesn't add anything. I mean, it does, but it doesn't show anything, right? Because we haven't added any ability to show stuff. So I'm going to start off by putting in some fake hard-coded data just to make this process a little bit more expedient. So I've got a whole bunch of stuff that I need to do. And then inside here, we want to create a UL of class. I think it's to-do list, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, to-do list. And inside here, we want a list of all of those items. So we can just map through those items. So just jumping back into JavaScript, we've got our list of to-dos. We're going to say, awesome, I'm going to map, because map is going to iterate over an array, change the shape of that array. And rather than returning a to-do list item, we're going to return some HTML nodes. So we get each to-do item. And then inside here, we can go HTML, uh, not ZZ. Okay, no, I'm not going to do that. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Uh, inside here, what we're going to do is we're going to call a function, a render function called view to do, just so we don't nest too deeply, and we're going to pass it our to do reference that we've just iterated over. So we're going to create another little render function here called view to do, to do, HTML. And then I'm going to uh, render some code, HTML view to do. Oh, no, wait, that wasn't the right one. View to do, which is just a list item that's got a div called view. It's going to have an input checkbox on it, and it's going to have a label. And inside that label, we're going to say, cool, this is where we want the to do text, right? So we're just going to say to do dot title. And that's enough. And we're calling view to do to do 
we've got the to do item. And if we refresh, we'll see that there are a whole bunch of to do's that we care about. And if we um, write a new to do like finish the app and hit enter, it just adds it onto the bottom, which is cool, really easy and elegant and just basically using vanilla JavaScript way of rendering stuff. Okay. Um, but now we want to be able to mark this stuff as done because some of it is done and some of it still needs to be done. So for that, we're going to write some stuff on this input class. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to change the styling if, or we want to check the to-do or the checkbox if the to-do item is completed. Now, how you would do that is you would say, awesome, I know, because HTML is amazing. I know that I need to go checked equals checked, right? And that will check the to-do item because that makes so much sense. But the reality is that this is the exact same as that, which is the exact same as that. And this presents us a problem because like, how do you dynamically add this attribute that needs to be there based off of a Boolean condition? And this is pretty common. So lit HTML has said, we're going to add that with a question mark. So the question mark will only add this attribute if it matches a condition. And that condition in our case is really easily going to be uh, to do dot complete it. Hey, awesome. Done. Uh, we additionally then want to say we want a click event. So we know that that's at for event. We're going to go at click and it's going to equal something. And then inside here, we're going to say, well, we're going to give it an anonymous function this time. We're going to say there's an anonymous function and we're going to say handle, uh, what's it called? Handle toggle completion. Handle toggle completion. And we're going to pass it through the reference of the to-do. Now, this is a nice trick. I'm just going to reformat it so you can see. The reason why we use the anonymous function here, we don't care about E, the event in this context, but we want to reliably get to-do. And we want to make sure that we don't have to rely on this or anything. Okay, we just want to pass the reference through. So we pass the reference through into this function. And we're going to define handle toggle completion as another function that takes in to-do. And to toggle the completion of a to-do, you'd be forgiven for doing this, right? To do dot completed equals not to do dot completed. There we go. Done. Um, and now if I reload the page, firstly, some items are completed, and then we can complete. Let's not profit. We haven't profited yet. We are, I think, confused, maybe, <laughs> maybe confused. I don't know. I'm definitely confused. Okay, but we've actually done something really, really awful. And I'm going to use this to teach everyone a lesson. We've mutated state here. So we've taken a reference to a thing that exists in an array and changed it directly. And that's really, really bad. And JavaScript doesn't behave very well in those conditions. Like unexpected stuff happens. So a far safer default to fall into is to uh, clone and recreate something. And there's really, really awesome primitives to do that. So I know I'm going to need that eventually. Um, so I'm going to start off here with handle to do. So rather than pushing onto the to do's array, I can just shallow copy the to do's array and instead go to do's equals a new array and copy across oh, three dots, exactly three dots, no more, no less. Um, copy across all of the items of the to do array and just smash on the new item there, right? Uh, so now I'm not mutating state, I'm creating a new item, and JavaScript is happy. I've got a new reference, everything is great. And in here, unfortunately, our easy example becomes a lot more complicated. Because now what we need to do is we need to say, well, I need to go on the list of to-dos, I need to map the list of to-dos into an item, and for each of those items, I need to do a bunch of work. I need to say, well, if, it's, if T that I get through is not the same to-do that I'm talking about, and that's deliberately a double equals to get a coerced equivalency rather than an exact reference match, so a triple equals. Um, if it's approximately the same thing, return t, and that's fine. Otherwise, return a new object that I'm going to shallow copy to do out of, and then I'm going to say, well, override completed to be not to do dot completed. And this is a pattern you'll see a lot, irrespective of which framework you're using. So I think from a JavaScript -y perspective, get used to cloning and recreating stuff because it works really, really well with change detection, as we'll see in a little bit. 
Okay, so that's our handle toggle completion. We've refactored our stuff and we're now relatively comfortable about uh, not mutating state. Um, and here we've got, like we've got a whole to-do application in um, 77 lines of code that renders itself dynamically, that's got all the HTML neatly generated, um, and it's got a whole bunch of hard-coded data in it. So that's pretty easy, right? It's pretty quick and effective to do. And if you need to do something small, some small rendering, or really, really versatile, you just want to create some HTML, this is awesome. And like, it's lots of fun to do, and it's very vanilla. But I'm going to be lying to you if I, if I go, say that you should go away and write all of your big applications using this. Like, this is the way that you should write your software. Because there's no separation here, and as soon as you try and pry this thing apart, like, it's not going to work neatly. Now, there is a nice high-level primitive that wraps this stuff that's browser-native. Um, that gives us our component model that we really like, that all the other application frameworks like Angular, Vue, and React have created, um, but just using vanilla code with zero tooling, right? And that's web components. So I'm going to show you a little bit about web components. So it's going to get worse before it gets better, but hopefully by the end of it, I'll show you that like a little bit of extra complexity gives you a whole bunch. Okay. Now, the first part that gets worse is we can't just use our simple, dumb HTTP server anymore. We need to handle something that does bare module imports. So we can't go deep into the node modules directory for this stuff. We need to be able to say, well, just match lit HTML, or lit element in this case. Um, so what we will do is we'll install a simple open web components dev server. Uh, Dev, dev, dev server. Um, and all that does, literally it's HTTP server plus the ability to do bare module imports. Okay. Um, bare module imports, while it's busy installing, will become a browser standard at some point in time in the future, and then we'll just be able to get rid of this stuff. Okay. Then we're going to install a small abstraction layer on lit HTML called lit element. Lit element, lit element. No, element. <laughs> wow. Okay, there I got it right. I'm pretty sure. Which is basically just lit HTML plus web components bits and pieces. Okay. Um, inside our package JSON, let's just oh, package JSON. Let's go there again. We're going to change our start to rather than HTTP server, just run OWC dev server. And why we care about this is because what we're going to do is we're now going to import lit HTML um, and lit element. So we're going to import the HTML stuff, which we still care about, and lit element from lit element. <laughs> lit element. So you'll see we don't find the JavaScript file directly. It understands what lit element is, and it will go and make sure that it loads up the right thing at runtime, which is a lot neater. Um, and then we're going to create a component, and we're going to start on the outside of our app. We're going to start with the app here. Um, and I've created a little thing that writes the code for me. I just need to delete that item. You didn't see that. Look away. Wait. No, I needed to do something else first. Component. Let's call it app. And then to do app. Okay, now you must look away while I delete this. So what this is, is wrapping, or it's extending, it's a simple class that extends lit element, and lit element extends basic HTML element, the thing that the browser uses to create web components, just to, to ease some of the plumbing bits and pieces. Now the first thing that I've done is an awful hack that I can feel Richard's scornful eyes from the front row, um, is to create a render root, and this is going to disable something called the shadow DOM. Now the shadow DOM is really, really awesome at creating um, encapsulated style sheets, so think of it like encapsulation for your CSS, which is amazing, except I'm using an external style sheet, so I really don't want to encapsulate it. So I'm basically just going to switch it off. Uh, if you're interested in the Shadow DOM, I definitely think we should talk about the Shadow DOM a whole bunch more, but it gets complicated. So I switched it off. Then we've got the static properties getter, and this is just going to tell us what items inside this web component are going to trigger a re-render. Okay? Uh, we've got our render function that's just going to generate our HTML based off of the object model. And then we do this uh, window.customElements.define. Okay? And that's going to define literally an HTML element called the todo.app that's going to render this component onto the page. I'm then going to YOLO copy and paste this stuff into there. 
I bet you were worried I was going to retype it again, hey? Um, and then we know out of this, I'm going to leave the add to do method and the view to do render method, but we know we are going to need to do something about to do's, right? So it's going to be this dot to do, so it's relevant to this thing, and that means that the to do's is a property, which is cool. So, like at the outside of our application, we care about tracking our to do's array. But now we need to initialize that, and to initialize that, we're going to do it in the constructor. And because this is an extended class, we need to call super, just so that it doesn't complain at me. And then we're going to initialize this at construction time to this dot to do's equals, and then just copy and paste the stuff out. Just for the moment. Uh, I'm lost. I'm lost a little bit further. There we are. Okay. So we're going to initialize our to-dos. I think I've got all of the thises. I don't think I've missed anything. If I refresh, oh wait. Ha. Ha ha It would help if I started the server. Sorry. No, I broke something. Oh, of course I broke something. Um, render is not defined. Um, yeah, this thing needs to go. So that's the first part. That stuff has no, no relevance anymore. But the second part is I'm now, I'm now creating this custom element, but the custom element still has to exist on the HTML page because that's what we're loading in the first place. So if I go to our index.html page, I would literally then throw away this stuff. It doesn't add value anymore. And then add a to do app element. Todd. Who's Todd? <laughs> I promise I can type better than this. Okay. Yeah, and everything works exactly as we expected. Ironic applause. I love ironic applause. Okay, but importantly, if we go take a look at. Uh, show elements, we'll see that we now have the to-do app, and inside that to-do app, we've got all of our bits and pieces, okay? So the next step is to say, well, let's go and encapsulate each of these render functions, okay? And we're going to start with add to-do. So for add to-do, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file. Put it in its own file. Lots of little files with lots of little things. So add to-do dot to-do dot js. Um, inside here, we're going to reference the exact same component, which is going to go add to do, and then initialize it as, oopsie, oh, that sucks, add to do, add to do, let's hide that, okay, um, we don't necessarily know what we're going to put in properties yet, but let's figure out what we're going to put in HTML, that we can just copy across from here, we wrote it earlier, so we've got our add to do function in here, going to get our input, then just throw this away for the moment, and inside here we're going to paste it in there, and then we've got our input, new to do, placeholder, autofocus, key up, aha, so we need this dot handle to do, okay, um, I'm going to make this an anonymous function, and the reason why I'm going to make it an anonymous, anonymous function using fat arrow is so that we can reliably use this, so I'd recommend, rather than pa passing around function references, Try and use the fat arrow because it's gonna, it's just gonna be safer. And then I'm just going to forward on E, um, and then that's our handle to do method over here. And now things get complicated. So the first thing is the syntax is different cryptically because it's now an instance method. So we're gonna fix it up. Fix it up. Uh, the first part is fine. Uh, this part is now suddenly not fine because we don't have the list of to-dos. That exists on the main parent, right? Um, so we need to do something interesting there. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass in a function from the main parent that says, cool, when you add a to-do, call this function. So what we're going to say is we're going to say, well, then we're going to go this.add to-do, and we're going to pass it through our new to-do, and you can figure out the rest of it. Okay, there throw that away. We're still going to reset the target value, but the render function now doesn't mean anything. So we can throw that away. Okay. Um, 
Now we need to pass in our add to do function so we know as our static properties we're going to need to pass in add to do as an object. Okay. Now on this side, when we use this all, we're going to say in our render function for our app, we're not going to call that little method. We're going to say uh, add to do. And we're going to say, well, when we have an add to do method, I want you to call, uh, again, an anonymous function, this dot add to do and pass in, sorry, it's not E, because we're not getting a click event, we're getting literally a to do back. And we're going to pass that to do into our add to do method that we're going to add down here, add to do, to do, okay. And we're going to say this dot to do's. is going to equal a new array. We're going to three dots, no more, no less. Um, and we're going to add our new to-do item onto it. Now, the reason why we don't want to mutate is because the change detection is going to pick up that it's a new reference and re-render. If we mutated that detection or the, the, the reference, it wouldn't know that something's changed. So it wouldn't know to redraw the page. Okay, most of the frameworks work like this. And in fact, if a framework doesn't work like this, get suspicious. Um, so that's that, that's that, and hopefully, have I missed anything? My notes are pages behind. I'm sure that's fine. I'm sure that's fine. Uh, sure. Let's go and see if it works. Okay, well, the page loads. No, it doesn't load. Ah, it doesn't load. Of course it doesn't load. Because I'm referencing the add to do element, but I've never imported it. So what we need to do is we need to import the add to do file. Import add to do dot js and then the element appears so we'll see that our to do app now in our header has an add to do element underneath it we can go this works hopefully and it does work <laughs> thank goodness um, and now the only thing left to do for sake of completion is to move our view to do across uh, we sort of know how to do that um, which is just to say, well, we're going to create a new view to do.js um, file. We're going to create a new component that's going to be view to do, view to do. We're then going to copy across our uh, view to do markup in here. We can already guess that to do, to do is going to be one of the items in our properties, right? So inside here, we're going to say, cool, there is a markup. We need to change it to this dot to do completed. And we're going to call this dot toggle completion. And the one that I always forget, that one also needs to be a this dot to do. Okay. Uh, and this dot to do dot title. Now in here, we know we're going to pass through to do, which is an object. And rather than write the handle toggle completion functionality inside this component, because it doesn't really care about it, right? It's an outer concern. What we're going to do is we're going to say, I'm going to pass that through as an object as well. And now in our app.js, we can throw this away. We're going to move our handle toggle completion method into the bottom here with our to do. We're going to fix it, yep, that, and then that, and then put the curly brace in the right place. Don't forget, otherwise it's going to be confusing, which is cool. All we need to do is we need to say, well, this dot to do's dot map, and then everything else holds together. Does it? It does. It's all fine. Um, and then inside our area here, rather than calling the to do function, we're just going to jump back into HTML. We're going to create a view, oopsie, view to do element. And our view to do element is going to take two things. It's going to take a property that we're passing in, which we're going to signify as a dot. 
So we're going to take, going to take a to-do property in, and that's really common. You'll use dot quite a lot. And we're going to pass in the reference to our to-do. And then the second thing we're going to do is pass in handle, is handle toggle to-do? I'm going to copy and paste it because I'm going to get it wrong. Handle toggle completion. Okay. Handle toggle completion equals, and then we're going to pass in a new reference that says anonymous method, this dot handle toggle completion. Uh, and I, I wrote E again, but I meant to do, but luckily like our tooling helps us here, right? So I can just hit F2 and say, well, that was actually to do, and it'll fix it. And I can actually say, well, that's an awfully named thing. Could, ah, no, I pushed the wrong button. Sorry, touch bars are awful things. Uh, let's rename that to something that sucks less, like toggle completion. Uh, and the nice thing about this approach is that you'll see that we've now got a clear separation of concerns between signatures. We're using the component, but what's happening on the outside, the inner component doesn't really care about, which suits us, right? So if everything is, oh no, things are not okay. Import, thank you, Jerry. Hey, I literally can't live code without Jerry. .js, oopsie. Imports, reload, and everything works. Thank goodness he can stop now. <laughs> okay, it still works. And we can just mark everything as done just to make sure. All right, so uh, that's it. That is, and like, these are really, really simple little components. I'm gonna zoom out for a little bit just to show you. Uh, this is the most complicated one being the app one that has the heart and soul of your application on. It hasn't taken us very long to write. Um, this one is really simple, and that's the, that's the ideal. Like, this is 30 lines of code, and this is reusable. You can technically bundle this up and use this elsewhere if you create high-level components or whatever the case may be. So that's great. If you feel a little bit like this right now, I understand. The code is out there. Uh, go take a look for yourself. You can see all the steps that I followed, and maybe it makes sense, maybe it doesn't. Um, Despite that, I think I'm going to stop talking now, and thank you very much for listening to me. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah? How big is the, how big is the HTML? That's a great question. So lit HTML is amazing because the core library is three and a half kilobytes gzipped. That's nothing. Like if you care, there was a question about performance and bandwidth in Africa earlier, right? This is nothing. Um, let's look at the network. Oh, have I stopped stuff? Did I break something? I did break something. Okay. Let's go and look at network. Uh, let's look at bytes transferred at the bottom there. So uh, that sucks. So the 300 kilobytes is the style sheets and images, right? But if we just look at J JavaScript, what is this? What is taking this up? Uh, no, that's not right. Hmm. Something's wrong. I think it's loading a polyfill or something. But the net result here is that this thing is, it says here somewhere. It's three and a half kilobytes gzipped. Lit element is about five kilobytes gzipped because they have to load in the web component change detection stuff that properties array bits and pieces. So it's tiny, like if you care about PWAs, you can build really, really compelling experiences that are really lean and lightweight, um, which we care about. Um, and then, like this isn't saying you need zero tooling. Uh, and this is fun because then you can just write stuff that works in browser. It's easy to debug, right? Here, and uh, like, this is something that's underrated. Here's our add to do method. I can put a breakpoint there and there's no transpilation, no source maps, no nothing. I can go and see, well, what, what is this stuff? What is this event when it fires? Um, which is nice and easy. Um, but you may want to then add transpilation later on. You may want to add um, uh, um, minification, bundling, that kind of stuff. But you can pick those problems as and when they become an issue. Yeah? Um, can you create an APK file for 
uh, lit.html is just a JavaScript rendering library. If you want to create an APK file, take a look at, I think it's, is it App Builder? App Builder? I think it's App Builder. Um, uh, or PWA Builder, I think that's it. PWA Builder. But it's basically something you can give your app and it'll, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. You can just give a URL and download a, uh, a APK and it uses something called Trusted Web Activities. Um, to, to basically load up a, a full Chrome instance that has full access to all of this stuff. That makes sense. So that's what people are using to put PWAs on the App Store at the moment. Trusted Web Activity. Anyone else? Yes, Sheena. Um, that's a really, really good question, and it's really, really hard because the answer isn't always will be, it depends. Um, it depends on a, a wide variety of things. Um, I think the, the one, the overwhelming thing that I'm trying to say is that you want to look at less tooling. Like, look at a reductionist sense, use the platform as much as possible. Because like often when you pick React, you end up in this embroiled React tooling. Picking React means that you've got JSX, which means that you have to use Babel. And to use Babel, you're probably going to want to use Webpack because Webpack is well defined. And then you're stuck trying to actually configure Webpack, and there's six weeks of the first, you know, of your project gone trying to configure Webpack. And it does. And there's some problems. Like there was a um, the one of the new FAQs. Uh, released by Apple as a part of their WWDC announcement, they went create React app on something, and it started prompting people to install it, and it had awful caching by default because they just left it with the defaults. So the challenge with create React app and that kind of tooling is that it actually has a whole bunch of pitfalls in it that you don't necessarily see, that aren't there in the raw platform, but they're there because you're relying on somebody else's opinions to dictate how you do stuff. Um, and by all means, like that's a great way to start. If you're going to start with NGNU or Create React App or whatever the Vue CLI uh, alternative is, those are all fine. Um, but just know that there's, there's tons of complexity. Like It's an iceberg. There's lots of stuff underneath that. And if you look at the bottom most level, I don't know, maybe, does anyone think that this was complex? Like I went through it quickly, which is a pity, but like it's, it's just HTML and simple, easy stuff. Um, how you pick it, it depends on, on too many factors to answer. And I'm going to get myself into trouble if I say one. Mike said I must use this. <laughs> but if I were to choose, and I have chosen, we use lit, H lit element and lit HTML on a daily basis. Because it's easy, and it can be easy. Yes, at the back. I don't understand what you mean. Because you know with uh, Angular yeah? or React, you can build the app. Yeah. Then you can just open the HTML file and then it works in the browser. It doesn't really though, right? It doesn't really work. The routing doesn't work properly. The loading doesn't work properly. Like, so the one thing, like the bare minimum, you cannot have, you cannot have, not have a web server anymore. You can't just open the index.html file. And there's more and more and more stuff going forward that's going to break for it. Um, because what does it even mean, opening up the file, right? HTML is inextricably tied to HTTP, and HTTP is the protocol by which it's delivered. Like, it's literally in the name. Uh, so the reason is I write, like, shepherd apps, and yeah. But the SharePoint app still, it has IIS underneath it, right? Which is acting as its web server. So it's still got a web server there. So it's difficult. And like HTTP server is literally like seven lines of Node.js code. Like you can build, and if we had more time, I would quickly code out uh, uh, an HTTP server. And I think if you go to like Node.js's website, Node.js HTTP server, like the first example is, hey, you've started. Um, the first thing that you need to write is your own web server. Um, somewhere, somewhere on the default. Is it in the Hello World app? They've moved it. Docs, let's see, Hello World. Uh, no. 
Where am I going? Was I, with it? Was I there? Have I gone to the wrong place? Guides. Hello world will be under guides. Getting started. Google it. There it is. There's your code. Copy and paste this and you'll have a not production grade, but you'll have an HTTP server that you can use. Like, this, is, this is kind of like what HTTP server actually does. Um, and it's literally just saying create a server and return content <laughs> from a static file. Um, so, so it's just one of those things. Like the two are inextricably linked. And that's just it. Whether you can build it, the stuff that I did today is all runtime stuff. Now what building means is, is really complicated. What does it mean to build a dynamic language? And I think that Angular, Create React App, and any sort of tooling that says it's building your app is doing a whole bunch of transpilation, where it's rewriting your application into something else. Now that's a whole bunch of steps, right? Is it taking old JavaScript features like imports, like the spread operator and literally converting it to some old ES5 code? Or is it um, um, minifying your code? Is it taking multiple files and bundling them together? And those are all distinct things. So what I'm advocating for is like, start, you can start simple. You can just be easy and expressive and then figure out which tooling you need when it becomes required. You know, do you need to minify? Yes, you do. You're going to have to install a minifier that does this stuff. And at some point in time, once you understand those bits, bits and pieces, you're going to say, you know what? We can combine this stuff and spend the six weeks to configure Webpack properly. That was a joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there isn't anything baked into the, in, in the box. But, but going forward, a lot of this stuff will just be native. You're just writing code in the browser. Um, and that's the way that we really should do it. Everything else is a hack for the status quo right now. Any other questions? If there aren't any other questions, I'm going to ask questions. I have to ask questions. I have two questions to ask. One lady and one gent. Great. So I'll just check them here. I'm going to ask a lady question and a gent question. Well, I'll pick the answers based off of what t-shirt is left. So which character do you use to dictate that lit HTML needs to render an optional attribute? Question mark at the back. I'm presuming you don't want the ladies' t-shirt. You don't, oh. Either or. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Those things are not aerodynamic. So let's go for like a front row answer next time. Um, What, what is the difference, and this is, this is a lady's only answer, unfortunately. Uh, what was the difference between HTTP server and Open Web Components Dev server? Bare module imports. That's fine. Yeah, okay, well, maybe here, here it is before I d nearly decapitate somebody else. And dude, there were some like Neo-like reflexes. I was really, really impressed. You know, you would have you done well in this situation. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a good evening.